viewers uh, the welcome to Empathy Manual show and uh, we're here with a guest in the house and uh, we want, we're still on the post-COVID-19 series in businesses in Rwanda, Kigali precisely. And now we want to give uh, honors to the guest to introduce himself to us. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, my name is Charles Mburanga. I'm a sales director at uh, FarmFresh. FarmFresh is, uh, is the company that uh, deals in uh, legumes, to be precise, beans. Our mandate is to, is to ensure that we provide uh, quality products uh, to our clients, to be precise, pre-cooked beans. What we do is that uh, we, get, we buy beans from farmers, uh, clean them, sort them, and then uh, we pack them. Uh, for ready, ready for co consumption. Uh, we have two types of uh, two, two types of brands. We have uh, high iron beans and uh, mixed beans. Uh, literally, uh, the the difference between these it's mainly with the quality, with the type, with type types of the beans. The mix are really mixed beans are, are mixed brands of beans. But high iron, the, it's a specific brand of beans that is very rich with iron. Highly recommended to especially expectant mothers. Uh, so I head the, the commercial segment. Uh, part of my major duties is to ensure that uh, the company is profitable, company achieves its sales targets, and also other, other set, set goals as per management desires. So we are currently operating here in Rwanda, but uh, we have clients we are exporting to Kenya, um, DRC, uh, and uh, we are looking at uh, prospects in the Middle East, to be precise, Dubai, Dubai, Oman, and uh, also Europe in the, in the near future. We want to like, uh, welcome in uh, distributors like, that can help the company uh, like, uh, distribute your products to like, your various uh, locations where they are. Yes, uh, I mean already that is the, I mean that is the, that's the model with with fast moving goods. We have a distributor in Kenya. It's called OGK Investments. They're the authorized dealers in, in Nairobi. They're based in Nairobi, but they'll be distributing in other cities in Kenya. That's Kisumu, Mombasa, Nakuru, Eldoret. So here in Rwanda, we have appointed Get It, a company called Get It. Okay. Get It. Uh, they are authorized dealers uh, in the city of Kigali. But with prospects of, uh, I mean, expanding further to other cities like Musanze, Rubavu, and in the southern and the eastern part. So yes, we have distributors, and, and that is the model that we are looking at. Even in uh, all the countries that we plan to expand, we'll go through distributors. Yes. Our first question for the day is, uh, what impact has COVID-19 made on the industry as regards to your business? Uh, I mean, uh, to, to be honest, uh, us being an agro-based agro uh, industry, COVID, of course, it definitely has had an impact, to say, but uh, not, uh, it hasn't hit us so bad because agriculture has been pre prevailing. So we haven't uh, run short of supplies from our farmers. Despite COVID, farmers carried on farming, so we kept on getting the beans. But now it has affected us in, uh, in other aspects, especially on the log logistical aspect of the business, especially exports. Uh, uh, trucks, uh, currently, you know, uh, transport has, has risen from, uh, I mean, a truck would, uh, prior to COVID, you'd get a truck in Nairobi at uh, $800. Now trucks are charging $2,500, $2,000. As a, as a result of COVID. That's the transportational cost. That is the transportational cost because, uh, because there's limit. Some transporters have, uh, have stopped working. So the demand, the demand is a bit high. The, uh, the, the, the regulations that, that have been put in place, trucks from Kenya have to stop at the border, then the police take, brings the border. So that kind of, that kind of operations. So indeed, COVID has affected us in that way especially on the, on the logistical aspect of the business especially. We have, um, we have our partners, our engineers, engineers from China, 
uh, who haven't uh, managed to come to do their work because of COVID. So all that is pending. Uh, so, so until 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 the air, the airspace is open, that's when they can come in. I mean, so there's a lot of there's a lot pending as a result of COVID. Mm. Okay. What changes have you made to ensure employee and customer safety during this COVID? Mainly, we've been uh, adhering to to the recommendations from the Ministry of Health. At our plant, uh, maybe in future when we come to our plant, we were put uh, were managed to, to to procure safety kits as as recommended by the the Minister of Health and other other bodies involved. Uh, every every employee has a, a healthy kit, health and safety kit. Uh, we've given them sanitizers to use at both at home and at work. Uh, we've, uh, we've given them up. Uh, we get updates, updates uh, on uh, on COVID uh, data. We provide them da- with data on the status of COVID and the recommendations that should be made. So literally, what they ma- they, it's li- literally been adhering to the recommendations from the Ministry of Health. How has your company supported the community the less privileged uh, during this pandemic? Normally, we have uh, already. Our company has been supporting the community even before, even prior to COVID. We have uh, a school feeding program. A school feeding program where the, the, the price, the, the price of uh, on the school feeding program, is not similar to like the prevailing prices on the market. So it is discounted with. It's discounted to almost forty percent. So our, our aim is to make an impact. I mean, students. You know, most schools feed on beans. So we want to we want to ensure that at least every school can can afford to to feed students at a cheap cost. Already, we've been doing that contribution. We 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 have been making it. And actually, we have a program post COVID when when students resume school, because currently, you know, like schools. Schools have, um, of definitely are going to have uh, a budget budget challenges definitely as a result of COVID because it's, it's a cycle. So the money comes from government. Government dispatches money through schools, what they call the capitation grant. So it's that money that the schools use to manage this. So of course, gov- government definitely will have budget challenges as a, a result of COVID. What we are going to do, we are willing to to give product on credit for that student can't feed. And then maybe on top of discounting, we are going to give credit to these schools so that schools can can afford, can manage to to feed kids as they figure out how to combat these challenges that are related to budget. So that is the plan we have. During this pandemic, has mm. your company laid off staff? No, we haven't. Okay. Uh, That's beautiful. Uh, That's beautiful. We have we have managed to pay salaries as, as per contract. And so far we have managed to retain the entire team. So everyone is still, uh, is still on work, on duty. Okay. Mm. We would like to know how has your company been getting in touch with your customers, both uh, locally, both abroad? How have you guys been getting across to your customers during this uh, We've been running a series of uh, a social media campaign. It's mainly we've been using social media and communicating on uh, the latest development mm-hmm. in regards to our, our business and our company. Mm-hmm. So mainly, it, is, uh, it has been mainly awareness on availability and, uh, and any information that is deemed necessary uh, to clients. So we've been running um, social media campaigns. Okay. Mm. Um, what, what do you think is the future of the business? The future of the industry as regards to your business? You mean the future of the industry, agriculture as an industry? Yes. Agriculture, no. Agriculture, I mean, the future of agriculture is definitely bright. Okay. No matter the pandemic? No matter the pandemic. Because production, you see, like, COVID has mainly, production is mainly done in the rural settings. And if, if you have made an observation, COVID has been mainly affecting people in the urban settings. So agriculture has been prevailing. Farming, farming is prevailing regardless regardless of COVID. So that means there's, there's no 
There's no production deficit. So, which implies that agriculture, agriculture is, is spared, I should say. Okay, but mm. uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, getting your farm produce down to, to the uh, chain, which is the consumer uh, right now, are you saying it's not going to be affected by the pandemic? With exports, yes, but with, uh, with domestic sales, I don't, uh, don't see that much of an impact. I mean, a, a negative impact as of COVID, because production is thriving, Distribution is is okay. Maybe what other things like uh, like outdoor marketing? We can't do road shows okay. as as a result of that. Mm-hmm. But still, that will come down in your in your sales at the end of the day. It yes, it will. It will, but not uh, not 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 that much. Okay. Not, but definitely the impact is there. But with agriculture, it's not uh, it's not it's not that bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd we'll like to know how have you handled the, the pandemic personally, family, and what uh, lesson have you learned? Just from this? I mean, it has been. Uh, I personally, it is mainly to do with uh, cautiousness, <laughs> and knowing that uh, COVID is real. You know, when it was starting, it was uh, everyone was downplaying it. But we have come to realize that it's real. What, have we, what we're doing is, that as a family, we're taking precautions, we're taking measures, we are avoiding unnecessary meetings, unnecessary movements, and also, I'm literally, I mean, I mean, enforcing discipline that is linked to preventing it. Yeah, that's what we are doing, and we are advocating for everyone here to do the same at their homes. Mm. We would like to know your final words to the people in diaspora during these hard times. Our final word is that uh, uh, let, let everyone be strong, let everyone take the measures that have been recommended by both the governments and the, and the World Health Organization. COVID is, of course, COVID is, is challenging, yes, but uh, as, as we move on with our, with our lives, let everyone be cautious, let everyone adhere to the measures that have been put in place. Let's get disciplined, let's change our lifestyle, let's, uh, let's reshape our thinking. And if we do that, definitely we shall, we shall overcome. Yeah, that's, that's what I can tell the public out there. Okay. Mm. We want to thank you so much, sir, for gracing this interview. And we hope to be back again to know about uh, how we've progressed so far, even when the, uh, post, uh, the COVID-19 is all over. And we want to so much thank you for this interview. Mm. And uh, to our viewers out there, Thanks. I'd like you to uh, share this, the video, uh, like it, and uh, leave a comment uh, below the video. And uh, till next time, stay with us. Thank you.